In this condition, I am asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. Text 8. Nahi prapashyami mamatanu dhyad yachokam uchoshanam indriyanam avatya bhumav asapatnam idriddham rajyam shuranam apichadi pratyam I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to dispel it even if I win a prosperous, unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven. Text 9. Sanjaya Vacha Eva Matva Nishikesham Gura Kesha Parantapaha Nayatya Iti Govindam Uktva Tushnimba Translation, Sanjaya said, Having spoken thus, Arjuna, chastiser of enemies, told Krishna, Govinda, I shall not fight, and fell silent. Text 10 Tam uvaja rishi kesha Prahasan eva bharata Sena yor bhayor madhye Visidantam idam vachaha. O descendant of Bharata, at that time Krishna, smiling in the midst of both the armies, spoke the following words to the grief stricken Arjuna. Oma jnana timirantasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha namam vishnu padaya krishna prishthaya bhutale shri mati radhanat swamini dinamine. Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimati Jaya Pataka Swami Niti Namine Namachari Padaya Nitai Krupa Pradayane Gora Katha Dhamadaya Nagra Gramatari Ne Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Ne Nirvishisha Shunivati Paschati Deshadari Ne Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shrivasati Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in these few verses that we read starting from text 3 through text 10 we're trying to understand the position of Arjuna, what he is really going through. And Krishna is trying to provoke Arjuna at this point. We saw that in the beginning of the chapter, Krishna is saying, Aho Bata, from where, you know, all these impurities are coming to you, Krishna, to, to Arjuna. Krishna is saying this, that where are all these, you know, impurities coming from you? They do not befit you. And then now in text 3, Krishna is further chastising Arjuna and Srila Prabhupada explains that he's trying to make Arjuna's Kshatriya, uh, you know, uh, blood boil, actually. So Krishna is directly, you know, kind of uh, hurting Arjuna's ego, trying to do that. He's saying that do not yield to this degrading impotence. You know, to call a Kshatriya to be impotent is like the worst, you know, of... Um, uh, worst of kind of, you know, talk that can never be done to a kshatriya. It's, it's way below their dignity. You know, they prefer to be killed rather than to be called important. So Krishna is doing exactly that, and he's saying that it does not become you. Give up this petty weakness of heart and arise, O chastiser of the enemy. Parantapa, you know, that uh, Krishna is saying you have destroyed your enemies. You know, and these same enemies, you have destroyed them in the past. You know, during the battle of Virata. At uh, that time you didn't see, you know, that you were fighting against your guru, you're fighting against your grandfather, you're fighting against your cousins. You didn't see all of that at that time. So what happened now? What's going on? So Krishna is trying to just instigate Arjuna and make his kshatriya blood boil. Moving on, at that time then Arjuna is saying, you know, counteracting all the all the arguments that uh, Krishna is giving and throwing at Arjuna. Arjuna is also now throwing back something to Krishna. He's 
calling Krishna. He is addressing Krishna as Ari Sudana and Mother Sudana. He is saying, Krishna, you know, in the first chapter, Arjuna, we remember how Arjuna at many instances he was addressing Krishna as Madhu Sudhana. And it was underlying at that time that, you know, indirectly Krishna is being told by Arjuna that, you know, Arjuna is saying to Krishna that you killed demons, but you are asking me to kill my own relatives. So that was very much underlying. He was not saying that directly to Krishna. But here in text 4 in chapter 2, Arjuna is directly telling Krishna that you killed demons. You are the enemies of, you are the greatest enemy of your enemies. You are Arisudana. Arisudana means you are the killer of your enemies. But look at my situation. What are you telling me to do? You're telling me to go ahead and kill my grandfather and my teacher and all of them who are worshipable by me. It's completely contradictory, Krishna, that you are not going and killing Ugrasena or your own, you know, fathers. You're not going and doing that. You're killing demons. You're killing your enemies. And you're asking me to go and kill my own relatives. It's not fair. So this is Arjuna's, one of his arguments. And he's, then he's saying that what should, I mean, it's okay. The next verse, Arjuna is saying in text 5, that he's saying that it's better for me to live in this world by begging than to live at the cost of the lives of great souls who are my teachers. For a kshatriya, for a normal person to say this, not a big deal. But for a kshatriya like Arjuna to say this, that, you know, it's better for me to live in the world by begging is, you know, Arjuna is trying to show to Krishna that you may be telling me so many things. You call me impotent, you call me whatever. You know, I don't care, Krishna. But I don't have the strength to stand against my worshipable gurus, my teachers. So, even though desiring worldly gain, they are superiors. So, Arjuna is saying that I understand that my superiors, what they are doing is not correct, that they are my enemies, that they are, you know, doing all of this for worldly gain. They are still my superiors. So, whatever, you know, if they are killed, that we enjoy in this world will be tainted with their blood. So, you know, Arjuna is saying, Krishna, kind of enjoyment I really don't want. I don't want, you know, things that I will get, uh, you know, uh, all of these things that I will get, all this material prosperity that I will get. I don't want it because it will be tainted with their blood. And I cannot enjoy such things. Then text 6, Arjuna is then showing his confusion. This is the first time in text 6, Arjuna is actually, finally, after giving all of his arguments, he is actually confused. Arjuna does not know what is right and what is wrong. He is not able to decide by himself. So therefore he is saying in text 6, that nor do we know which is better, conquering them or being conquered by them. If we kill the sons of Dhritarashtra, we should not care to live. Yet, they are now standing before us on the battlefield. So Arjuna is saying, Krishna, I don't know what to do. You know, whether I should go and conquer them, or whether I should go and, you know, get defeated by them. What should I do? If I go and conquer them, I will definitely defeat them. No problem. I will defeat them. And then, whatever I will get, my unrivaled kingdom on earth... That is no use because how will I be able to enjoy it? I will not be able to enjoy it after I kill my own kinsmen, after I kill my own relatives. I will not be able to enjoy any of it. So now I am confused, Krishna. And therefore, the first time Arjuna is begging Krishna to instruct Arjuna, sorry, Arjuna is begging Krishna to instruct him, is this text 7. He's saying, Karpanya dosha pahatha swabhava. He's saying that I am losing my composure because of miserly weakness. Arjuna is accepting it. 
that this is nothing but miserly weakness that I'm having right now. Karpanya dosho pahata svabhava. That miserly, you know, weakness, I'm getting all this dosha, which is all this, you know, weakness of the heart. I'm getting and I'm getting afflicted by all of these characteristics, Krishna. And therefore, I am, you know, in this condition, I'm asking you to tell me for certain what is best for me. I don't know, Krishna. I am confused. So now you tell me what is best for me. And now, from being a sakha, Arjuna is Krishna's dearmost friend. So from now, from being a sakha, you know, Arjuna is saying that, you know, many, many, you know, days have passed, Krishna, when I've slept on the same bed with you. I have, you know, sat down with you, eaten from the same plate as you. I have, you know, put my hand around your shoulder. I have done all these friendly gestures with you. So if I am trying to be your friend, you will not be able to instruct me in that same mood. Because now I am asking you to take a higher position. Friends means equal. They are on an equal position. But when we take the position of of a disciple and of the teacher, then the teacher is naturally at a higher platform than the disciple. So therefore Arjuna is saying, today I am accepting you as my teacher, as my guru, and I am your disciple Krishna, so you please, uh, instruct me, and I'm surrendering unto you. I'm I'm a soul surrendered unto you. Shishya steham sadhimam tvam prapannam. Prapannam means I'm taking shelter. I'm surrendering. Prapanna means to take shelter, to surrender. So Arjuna is saying, Krishna, I'm surrendering unto you. Whatever you feel best, you can do that with me. Please instruct me. And then Arjuna is continuing to say, because the reason why I am doing this, Krishna, is because I am not finding any means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. You know, when we are also at any kind of great confusion in our lives, um, of course, we can never be in the situation that Arjuna is in you know, where he is, Arjuna is in the battlefield and the opposing party is his own relatives. Uh, however bad our material situations may be, it is nothing in comparison to what Arjuna has faced. But when we are faced with our own limited kind of challenges, we do feel like this, that there's no means to drive away this grief which seems to be drying up our senses. We feel like this that I will not be able to dispel it even if I win a prosperous, unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven. That Arjuna is saying, I don't know what I will do. You know, even if I get this kingdom, is it going to be really worth it? Is it going to be, you know, uh, uh, okay for me to kill my relatives for this? I don't know, Krishna. I am completely at this juncture in my life that I don't know. You know the problem most of us face when we are in situations like this. We try to control things. We try to set things right in our own lives. But it it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of surrender to Krishna to say these words, Krishna, I don't know what is best for me. But you, Krishna, are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You know past, present, and future. And therefore, Krishna, I desire to surrender unto you. Please, allow me to surrender to you, and you can do whatever is best for me. It takes a lot of courage to say this statement. It takes a lot of surrender, a lot of love towards Krishna, a lot of faith on Krishna to be able to say this. And by saying this, statement, Arjuna is showing what a great devotee Arjuna is. That in spite of giving all of his reasoning, very, very justified reasoning, 
Arjuna did not make a decision. He could not make a decision. And although for the great Kshatriya that he is, he is, you know, imagine Arjuna's lineage. He is the son of Indra. He is the son of the greatest king on the planet, Maharaj Pandu. He has got the most celebrated brothers, you know, that can ever be in this entire creation. Yudhishthir, Bhim, Nakul, Sahadev, all glorious and, you know, divine brothers he has. Wife, like Shubhadra, Draupadi Devi, all of these are wives of Krishna. No, sorry, Arjuna. And the greatest treasure that Arjuna possesses is that he has the friendship of Krishna. So that all of this, for a personality like Arjuna to say that, Krishna, I don't know what to do. Imagine the amount of humility that takes for Arjuna to say this to accept this and to surrender unto Krishna. So imagine if Arjuna can do it, why can't we who are nothing in compared to Arjuna, why can't we try to imbibe this mood and in every situation of our life say this to Krishna that, Krishna, I don't know what to do. Please take charge of my life. So that's what we need to take back from these verses that Arjuna is so gloriously surrendering his life, his thoughts, his words. He's surrendering everything to Krishna and saying to Krishna that now you instruct me and I will do whatever you tell me to do. And that's what Sanjaya is saying that... uh, in text 9, as Sanjay is saying to Dhritarashtra that having spoken thus, Arjuna, the chastiser of enemies, told Krishna that, hey Govinda, I shall not fight. And he fell silent. And then Krishna, hearing this, he smiled. Prahasan. Prahasan means a gentle smile. You know, um, there are different kinds of Uh, smiles that are glorified about Krishna. There's something called Smita. There's called this Prahasita. Then there is Hasya, which is loud laughter. And, you know, there is very, very loud laughter also. So this Prahasan is a smile. It's a very gentle smile that Krishna is now going to start dealing with Arjuna as a teacher that he's instructing his disciple Arjuna because that is the position that is clearly uh, accepted by Arjuna and he has himself requested Krishna to do so. And we should understand that Krishna, he could have himself started from the very beginning itself. You know, not let Arjuna go through all of these tribulations. Krishna could have just immediately started giving the instructions to Arjuna. He is Krishna's in Arjuna's best friend. So Krishna is Arjuna's best friend. He knew Arjuna's heart. There was no need for Arjuna to go through all this anxiety. Krishna could have anyways instructed him. But Krishna does not interfere till we want him to interfere. That is the supreme grace of Krishna. Krishna never comes in between our uh, enjoyment or our free will. Unless the time that we want Krishna to involve himself in our lives, Krishna stays nice and far away. He is not, he's not dying to come and help us, no. Krishna has got you know, many, many more people to take care of who are more surrendered to him. Krishna is very happy taking care of them. But when we choose to surrender to Krishna... And when we finally make that step towards Krishna, that Krishna, I am yours from today. You do what you want with me. I'm a puppet in your hands. You make me dance, Krishna. If you can say that to Krishna, Krishna will not waste even a moment. And he comes to our rescue. He comes and helps. So similarly here too, we see that even in the life of Mother Draupadi, Draupadi till she was asking Dhritarashtra to help her. She was asking Bhishma Pitama, Vidura, Dronacharya. Then she asked her husbands to help her when Dushasana was insulting her and trying to disrobe her. At that time, she even asked her glorious husbands, but none of them came to her aid. Then she tried herself to safeguard her own dignity, but she was not able to stand in front of the strength of Dushasana. 
And at that time, she just raised both her hands and she said, Hey, Govinda, hey, Krishna, please help me. As soon as she said that, Krishna immediately started supplying saris to her and covered her dignity and saved her and protected her. So like this, in many, many instances, we know that Krishna only responds only when we want Krishna to respond. So therefore, it is up to us how much involved we want Krishna in our own lives. So that way we can, you know, we should not blame that, oh, look, Krishna, we are doing so much for him. What is Krishna doing for us? No. That should not be the attitude. Our, rather, our attitude should be, what can I do for Krishna? How much can I surrender to Krishna? How much do we want Krishna to be involved in our own lives? That is the question we need to ask. Are we still trying to hold on and you know, control certain parts of our life? Then we cannot expect that Krishna is going to take full charge. Unless we are 100% surrendered to Krishna, Krishna will not involve, you know, if we are surrendered 50%, Krishna will also reciprocate 50%. If we are surrendered 100%, then Krishna will do whatever he wishes to do with our lives. We should always remember that. So with this, we will end here today. If there's any questions or comments, we can take that now. Krishna Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, I'm Indu. I uh, normally listen to your recordings, and it has it is very beautiful. And this is the first time I got a chance to listen to your call live. I did have a question on uh, surrendering. Uh huh. Uh, so, um, so what is the process of surrendering? How do we just say, okay, Krishna, no, I can't do anything. Can you take over? Mm -hmm. It. He, so for Arjuna, he's physically present there. Arjuna can yeah. actually tell him, okay, now you advise what's best for me. Right. In our case, uh, when we surrender, do we do anything? Do we, uh, do we have to put in an effort to at least try? Mm -hmm. Or what should we do? What is the process? Wonderful, wonderful question. Very nice question. Thank you so much for asking that. Yes. Um, there is a process to show to Krishna that we want to surrender to you. And the process is by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. When we voluntarily start chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and practicing the tenets of devotional principles in our lives, then we slowly get to realize that Krishna is non-different from his sound vibrations. So that, you know, the, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, we will be able to realize that it is non-different from Krishna himself. And actually the Maha Mantra reciprocates, you know, by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, just like how Arjuna is able to reciprocate with Krishna, we will also be able to uh, reciprocate with Krishna by chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. That is the potency of this Maha Mantra. And when we are chanting the Maha Mantra in the association of devotees, at that time what happens is that that is the process that is recommended by Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he has given Yajya Sankirtana Prayer. That, you know, Sankirtana means Samya Kirtana, to be chanting in the, in the association of the devotees. When we do that, then that is the way that we can really attract the mercy of Krishna. And the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is, literally means that, uh, O Radhe, O Krishna, O oh, Rama, reservoir of all pleasure, I am frustrated with, you know, um, the sufferings of this material world. I'm begging you to please pick me up and engage me in your service. That is the literal meaning of the Maha Mantra. So when we are engaged in chanting this over and over again, the Hare Krishna Mantra, we are actually telling Krishna to take charge of our lives. So the more we chant, the more we are telling Krishna to get actively involved in our life. And by this chanting, you know, devotees see in their own life. You can talk to any devotee who has been chanting for any number of years. All of their experience will say one thing, that they do see the working of Krishna in their own life. They have witnessed miracles in their lives.
And um, when we chant, we pray to Krishna, that Krishna allow me to surrender unto you. So these are the ways that we can, you know, practically show Krishna. You know, it's not just enough to say, yes, Krishna, I love you. You know, or yes, Krishna, I surrender to you. So then the question is, is it just important to do just the lip service or translate it into our activities also? We have to show Krishna by our actions that we are choosing to surrender to him. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, very beautiful answer. Uh, can I, I have a follow-up question to that? Yes, yes. Uh, so when we are chanting, do we just focus on the name? Do we think of the form of Krishna? Or very good question. Very good follow-up question. I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm just a beginner, so that's why it's. That's true. You're very well understood. No, 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 no. You're not a beginner. A beginner can never ask such questions. You are asking wonderful questions. So we are all in this together. We are on the same boat. So thank you for asking this question. Okay. Well, um, when we are chanting, the process that is recommended is that we should simply hear, just listen to the Maha Mantra. We don't have to make any extra effort of, you know, thinking about Krishna or thinking about the pastimes of Krishna, none of that. Because what happens is that, uh, so for example, we are chanting and we are not in the pure state. Then what happens is when we start thinking about Krishna's form or say for example if you start you know, thinking of Krishna as one of his pastimes, you'll say, okay, Krishna is wearing a yellow dhoti. Oh, that yellow bangle in Krishna's hand is very nice. What about my bangle? Oh, I, should, I, I don't have a matching bangle with that sari that I just bought. So, you know, our contaminated mind will just take us in that direction. Because we don't have control over our thoughts yet. We are not in that pure state. Uh, and we need to accept that, and therefore the recommended process is that when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, we should simply focus on listening, on hearing the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Just listen very attentively. And by hearing the, uh, you know, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra very, very attentively, when we focus on the Naam, on the, on the holy name, then the Nama will reveal the Rupa. Rupa means the form. Then the form of Krishna will automatically manifest in our heart. It is an automatic process. You don't have to strive for it or think about it or nothing. It is said that when we have Shuddha Naam, when our holy name chanting and listening is very, very good, then Naam will automatically manifest into Rupa, means the form of the Lord. Then that will manifest from Rupa comes the Guna or the qualities of the Lord. Naam, Rupa, Guna. The qualities of the Lord will automatically manifest. And then finally is the Leela. The Leela of the Supreme Lord will manifest in front of our eyes. This is an automatic process. It will, it will be a gradual process. We don't have to artificially start thinking of anything. Only thing that we have to do right now is focus and listen to each and every mantra of the, the sound vibrations of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then once our Naam is good, then automatically it will go into Naam, Rupa, Guna, and Leela. Does that okay. answer your question? Yes, yes, very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Mataji. Thank you so much. It's, it's, um, um, Hare Krishna, um, Mataji. Uh, this is Anita again. Uh, I uh, have a related question also, like you uh, very nicely explained, I mean very nice questions asked and the explanation is so good. Um, my, I have sometimes little confusion about the uh, Mahamantra, it is that Hare Krishna uh, means uh, Radharani, uh, uh, Hare means Radha, Krishna means uh, uh, Krishna himself. Uh, but when we are speaking about Rama, is it ex actually meant for uh, Ramchandra? Bhagwan, or uh, is it uh, for something else? 
Very good question. Thank you so much for asking that. But I just wanted to thank Indu Mataji for your very beautiful questions. And I hope that this answered your questions. It was very beautiful questions you asked. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mataji. I, I think I'm very clear on the answers. I, you, you gave it. You explained it very, very clearly. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Anita ji, coming back to your question, yes. Um, Hare is explained to be Srimati Radharani. Krishna is Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The aspect of Rama has three explanations. Mm -hmm. One is that we can meditate on Lord, uh, or we can, um, you know, remember Lord Ram. The mm -hmm. second is we can remember Lord Balaram, mm -hmm. Krishna's brother. Mm -hmm. Or... What Lord Chaitanya has recommended is that we should think of Raman. Raman means uh, he is the deity of Krishna who is worshipped in Vrindavan. I will send a picture of him in the group. Wow, uh, so you can, you can meditate on him because this Raman deity, he is the worshipable deity of Shla Gopal Bhatta Goswami. And mm -hmm. uh, he is a self-manifested deity. Mm -hmm. Raman of Hindi so much the henna. Welcome, what is it? Okay. So, several Hindi so much the henna. Raman ka matlab hota hai jo hame ramate hai. Ramate hai matlab jinse hame raman praft hoti. Jinse hame, um, you know, um, kushi praft hoti hai. Ali. So, ye in inka matlab hota hai ram. Jo even, even in Balaram. The reason why he was named Balaram is because Bal matlab shakti and mm -hmm. Ram matlab jinse hame bohat anand prapt hoti hai. So jo Bal se bharpoor hai aur jinme anand ka khazana hai, wo hai Balaram. Haan. Ram ka matlab hai jo hame bohat ramate hai, jinse hame bohat zyada anand prapt hoti hai, wo hai Ram. और रमन उसी उसी तरह से हम भगवान कृष्ण का एक नाम है श्री श्री राधा रमन तो रमन मतलब जिनसे हमें जिन जो हमें अपने लीलाओं में रमाते हैं जो हमें अपने लीलाओं से जो हमें आनंद प्रदान करते हैं वो है राधा रमन so when we actually chant Rama in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recommended ki hum uh, ye Raman ki uh, ko hum prasna karte hain. Ki we mm -hmm. beg him ki hume bhi wo apne leelao mein ramaye. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I will just send a picture. And this deity is, as I said, he is a, a self-manifested deity. Wo Swayam Prakashit deity hain. Bhagwan, mm -hmm. uh, jo Gopal ko praft hue the, and he is residing in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Wow, Hare Krishna. Wow, that's wonderful. I didn't know about it. So thank you so much for explaining this. Now one more uh, thing that I needed to ask. If suppose yeah. someone has a special affliction to Lord Rama only, then uh, we, that person will be meditating on Rama's uh, form, right? Mm -hmm. or, it's okay to meditate on any other form. Yeah, it's okay. It is okay. I mean, if you're attached to Lord Ram, yes, why not? It is okay. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is that we should also do what is recommended by our acharyas, no? Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we actually, um, you know, meditate on Raman, who is the one who is... Um, you know, recommended to be meditated upon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for clarifying that. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Mataji. This is Usha. I have a very quick question, Mataji, about the Mahamantra. Mm -hmm. What is the correct pronunciation of Mahamantra? Is it Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, or Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare? I'm always confused. Right. Um, this question was asked recently also. Um, the thing is that we need to understand that, 
you know, pronunciation is definitely very important in the Maha Mantra. Uh, ki, you know, we should be very careful ki hamara aise nahi ho raha pronunciation. Rish, rish, ram, ram, re, rish, ram, ram, re, rish, ram, ram, re, re. To kuch sunai nahi de raha because sometimes, you know, speed ki wajay se, sometimes because of familiarity with the mantra, we tend to chant like this. Ki hum, you know, and we'll notice ki hamara do or teen minute mein ek ek maala khatam ho rahi hai. So mm-hmm. that's a satar khona chahiye ki we should be careful how we are chanting, that we should be very clear on pronouncing each and every syllable of the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And regarding Ram ka pronunciation, some devotees they say, ha Ram Ram kehna chahiye, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. But um, and some actually Sanskrit mein jo pronunciation hai, wo hai Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. It's so the correct pronunciation is Rama. It's it's not Rama. Rama Rama Hare Hare Rama nahi hai. It's Rama. Rama. Okay. Rama. Okay. Rama, Rama is the correct pronunciation. Rama, but Rama, Hare Hare. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. Sometimes some devotees, you know, uh, they also say Ramo. You yeah. Know? So Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. They say that also. That's also fine. But the main thing is that it should be Ram. You know, Ram, ya Rama. But not Rama. You know, not How Rama. do you spell it, uh, Mataji? In Sanskrit, how, it, it's not uh, Ra. Akar, ma, that's it. Okay. But ma, okay. It's not, uh, how we write Ram? Uh, yeah, and then Visarga? No, no Visarga. This no Visarga, only Ram. It's only Ram, yeah. yeah. So Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this, that's why there's, since there's no Visarga in the end of ma, <laughs> yeah. so that's why it's an open-ended pronunciation. Okay, because I'm always confused. Some people are saying you should pronounce as Ram. Some are saying pronounce as Rama. Some are saying Ramo. So uh, what is the correct one? <laughs> that is such a confusion, you know. Yeah, so it's not Rama. You okay. Know? Um, Rama is like Ra, Akar, Ma, Akar. No, it's not ah. that. Ah. Okay. Um, but it's a, Ra, Akar, Ma. Ma, Ram. Ra, Rama. 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 Okay. Got it. Thank you very much, Mataji. For the question. It's such a wonderful class today. I really loved it. Thank you. (laughs) Hare Hare Krishna, Mataji. This is Avinanda. Hare Krishna. Uh, Mataji, uh, when you said complete surrender like uh, Arjuna, I have a doubt. Like as a normal human being, if I say complete surrender, and Krishna does something which is good for me in future, which as a normal human being, I cannot see it. And when mm-hmm. he does something, and which I don't see good as from where I am standing, but Krishna can see far, far, far beyond, which mm-hmm. I cannot see. And I see, oh, Krishna did this bad to me, which is good mm-hmm. maybe in future, but I am so impatient as a, mm-hmm. as a devotee. I'm so impatient. I just see the bad which I see from here. Mm-hmm. And then I get scared. And that scares me, saying that I want to completely surrender because I don't know what Krishna... I know Krishna is capable of everything. But if he does something, you know, and I get scared that he will do something that will push me away from him. So that's what is something I think... What do you, what do you suggest for a devotee like me who thinks like that for a surrendering? Well, that's, that's the way that we have to actually pray to Krishna, that Krishna, you do whatever is best for me, but you should also give me the strength to understand that, yes, whatever you're doing is best for me. So we should request Krishna for his blessings. Just like, you know, everyone, you know, we, we do get um, tests in our life. Krishna does give tests in our life. So we should pray to Krishna that, yes, Krishna, you can give me tests, but give me the strength so that I can pass the test also. Okay. So for everything, the devotee is dependent on Krishna. You see? Mm-hmm. So even for understanding the things that we don't understand in the meantime, even for tolerating those things in our life, we should beg for that intelligence from Krishna, for that strength from Krishna, that we can, you know, understand what Krishna is doing and, you know, how he is doing and why he is doing what he is doing. 
Yes, Mataji. Thank you. Does this answer your question? Yes, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you for the very nice question, Mataji. Thank you. Very good, Mataji. Thank you.